And these are coming from the vendors. This one sponsored by Express Scripts is, I must be sorry about this, Patty, Patty Dudenhofer. Did I say it right? Dudenhofer. Python Crash Course. Do you know Python? Well, then here you go. All right, so the plan is is that Kevin's going to speak till about uh, 5 to 12, 2, 3, 4 hours. Kevin gets going. Um, and then Mr. Christmas will be coming up, and then after that we'll do lunch. So are you ready, Mr. Uh, Crenshaw? Okay, we are rolling. I don't need uh, any sort of sheet to introduce our next speaker. Um, for those of you that don't know Kevin, Kevin is the founder founder and the managing partner i don't know ah whatever we, we never have names of yeah. secure ideas um i knew about kevin's stuff for a long time and uh you know it was one of those people i always wanted to meet two years ago we both keynoted at b-sides tampa and i yep. got to know him uh he came last year at defcon or derbycon we sat down yep. and we talked you know it's one this is one of the things I love about this uh, about this industry is I actually meet a friend and um, not only is he a friend he is one of the most knowledgeable people I have met when it comes to web application when it comes to pen testing he's one of the guys that does everything right uh, you guys are going to enjoy this so without further ado my good friend and genius mr. Kevin Johnson oh. I gotta live up to that. <laughs> Damn. Good morning. Oh, jeez. I always want people to introduce me by going, this guy sucks. That way I, you know, I have a bar I can get over, right? Uh, so I'm Kevin. Uh, as I found out, I'm one of four. And by the end of this talk, you're going to be hoping one of the other ones had presented. But um, the worst part about that is I changed my name when I turned 18. I picked this name, and it's this common, right? It's, it's really bad planning. The, the problem was my twin brother and I could not agree on how to spell McGillicuddy. Uh, because all the way through elementary school, there was always a Mr. McGillicuddy in the stories, right? But we didn't know a Mr. McGillicuddy, and we thought, we'll be Mr. McGillicuddy. Um, that's a hard word to spell. <laughs> so we picked Johnson. No penis jokes. <laughs> so, couple things before I get started. Uh, one, I'm Kevin. Uh, I'll go and switch to my bio slide. Uh, I'm Kevin. Uh, I am, as, I, as was said, I'm the founder, uh, head nerd of Secure Ideas. I've been a nerd for a very long time. I've been in IT for about 25 years. Uh, about 15 years ago, a company I worked for got hacked, and I got pissed. And I said, damn it, that's never going to happen again. Three months later, we were hacked again. <laughs> but damn it, <laughs> right? And that got me really started down this path. And, and to this day, I look at what I've done, what I've accomplished, what I've fooled people into thinking I know. And um, I'm really not sure how I got here. But psh, I'm here, might as well run with it, right? So Security is, is a consulting firm out of Jacksonville, Florida. We have an office. I always say Charlotte, South Carolina. For people who know geography, you know that's wrong. Uh, it's Rock Hill, South Carolina. We have an office there, but it's like a suburb of Charlotte. Nobody knows where Rock Hill is. So um, we also have consultants in Michigan and Tulsa. We've been around for seven years almost. In August will be seven years, which is really a surprise because we were in an accident. There was no plan to run a business. I got tired of travel and took a job at a very large bank that will remain nameless, Bank of America. And um, uh, that lasted two and a half months. And, um, and now I travel more. But <laughs> I'm also an IONS faculty member. For the people who don't know, IONS is an organization that's actually pretty cool. Uh, they have 50 of the best security experts in the world and me um, as faculty members. And we do a lot of stuff with them. I'm an open source project of Fanatic. I'm the creator of Samurai WTF, which stands for Web Testing Framework, honest. 
<laughs> okay, it doesn't. Um, things like Weaponized Flash, Ocoso. I was the project lead for base for the people who are old like me uh, and remember running base. Uh, and if you did run base, I am so sorry. Um, couple other things that you need to know. One, uh, I am full of tangents. Uh, I will attempt to make the tangents somewhat related to what I'm talking about, but uh, uh, no promises. I'm full of lots of things and my eyes are brown. Uh, I also have a uh, sense of humor. I want to point out, though, that I did not say a good sense of humor. Right? Uh, my favorite joke, and it's been my favorite joke for a while, so I may have told it last year when I spoke here. Do you guys not, do you guys know why Walmart wasn't hacked? They're not a target. <laughs> exactly. Right? Uh, I actually got to introduce the CISO of Walmart at an event, and I told that joke, and he wouldn't shake my hand. <laughs> it was like, you know, like you introduce somebody, you go like that, right? And the dude went, <laughs> and walked around me, and I'm like, I said you weren't hacked, dude. You got the good end of that joke. The other company named themselves after something people shoot at. So, uh, but <laughs> that's that's me. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, you'll you'll hear about my daughters, my wife, uh, uh, things like that throughout the talk. I am, and something I'm very proud of, my wife says it's the nerdiest thing I've ever done, but I point out to Denise that she met me when I was 26, so she doesn't know. Um, <laughs> Let's be clear, I've done nerdy things. I'm so nerdy that the guy that took my lunch money all the way through school still takes my lunch money. But he makes a damn good Subway sandwich. So, <laughs> I, uh, so I am a, a member of the 501st. Uh, the 501st Legion is a charity group. We build screen accurate Star Wars costumes. <laughs> Told you, nerdy. And then we raise money for charity. Uh, I believe last year, uh, worldwide, we have about 10,000 members, and indirectly, we raised about $11 million, right? So uh, I'm very proud of that. Um, so hence, if you see the pictures, uh, that's me as Darth Vader and me as a clone trooper. And yes, it's my daughter <laughs> as an Imperial officer, because damn it, families who cosplay together stay together or something like that. Somebody's going to cross-stitch that on something, I think. Uh, so uh, the other thing I want to talk about, and I want to be very clear that this presentation is not an ad. I hate when vendors stand up and say, I'm going to teach you something, and what I'm going to teach you is how cool my service is. Right? Uh, that's not what this is, but I do want to do a little bit of an advertisement at the very beginning, and I hope you guys will forgive me for it. Um, but what I want to mention is, one, if you are active duty military, veteran, or first responder, or know somebody who is, and they are interested in cybersecurity, all of our training is free. Uh, all of our online recorded classes. Ah. So if, they, if you know somebody, if you are somebody, please have them reach out. The other thing, and we, that's we've been doing for about two years, and we keep trying to push it. Uh, the other thing that we announced three weeks ago, oh, by the way, this talk about a PG-13, okay? Um, so about three weeks ago, we announced it. We uh, rolled out our user awareness training, which is compliance-based CBT crap with um, you know reporting and all that stuff, and our vulnerability assessment services we've been doing for a while. Uh, but three weeks ago, we announced that if you are an approved nonprofit charity, our user awareness training and our vulnerability assessment services are 100% free for the life of the service. I want to be very clear, this is not like the scam from Taser where they'll give away a free body cam to every cop, but after a year they have to sign a five-year contract or some crap like this. This is for the life of the service, 100% free for the approved nonprofit charity. Uh, I want to be very clear though that it is an approved nonprofit charity. And I don't mean the government said you're a nonprofit charity, it's Kevin said he wants to help you out. Because, for example, Westboro Baptist Church, those fuckers who protest funerals, right? They're a nonprofit charity and fuck those guys, okay? Um, so, I think I just broke the PG 13 comment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, so if you know of a charity, if you work with a charity, really seriously, there's not a gimmick. We want to help them out. We, uh, we're seeing way too many attacks against charitable organizations. There's way too many vulnerabilities there. And uh, we don't want people to stop donating to charities and helping charities out because they're afraid for security. 
Okay, so please help us push that. And I want to be very clear, we're, we're having trouble promoting it because we don't want it to be an ad for us. We want it to be a real service they use. Okay, so let's talk about what we're talking about today. And this is one of my favorite slides. I use this slide in every presentation practically, right? So you may have seen it before. We are in the Wild West. It's 2017 though, right? And, I, and I'll be blunt, I, I'm a jerk, right? It is actually in court records that I'm an asshole. Um, I do expert witness service and the defense got really pissed because I kept correcting them and uh, they called me an asshole in the deposition. And then when I went to testify, the judge said, hey, are you the asshole? So all I knew to say was, yes, your honor. <laughs> like, well, I don't know, is that illegal? But, um, so, uh, I, but we, we look at things today and I am blown away by the fact that, look, I'm an old fat guy, right? And, and lazy, I'm an avid indoorsman. But uh, we have been talking about security forever. SQL injection was discovered, I don't know, you know, like discovered, people in lab coats or something, 20 something years ago. That's not an exaggeration. 20 years. Somebody said, hey, this SQL injection thing seems bad. At the same time that they discovered SQL injection, they announced the solution. Parameterized queries. And I want to be very clear, for the people who don't know, parameterized queries are better than dynamic SQL from a performance perspective. They are easier to write from a development perspective, and they're safer from a security perspective. There is literally, and I mean that with the real meaning, not the new screwed up meaning that means figuratively, <laughs> screw Oxford, but <laughs> literally better in every way, yet, 20 years after we told people about this, and I want to be very clear, when I say we there, I am not taking credit for that discovery. I, I was an idiot, right? Uh, I did not find this. And yet we still find SQL injection on a regular basis in applications that were built this year. I did a test for an application that was built in January, January of 2017. And I go and I meet with the developers, because we do like we do a lot of this. Okay? And I go and I'm meeting with the developers, and the developers say to me, and I always I will be I will be honest, I giggle a lot in my job. <laughs> the developer says to me, I don't know why they hired you to test. Our app is secure. <laughs> my answer is that's why they hired us to test. Sir, do you remember how to breathe regularly? Because you're a moron. But, so we go to meet with the guy, and he's like, we're secure. And I'm like, oh, okay, what, what, what do you do? Well, we have controls. Yes, so do I. I don't pee myself. <laughs> <laughs> you might not want to sit next to him. <laughs> the guy just said, I wish I could say that. <laughs> Depends, man, depends. But, so the guy says, we have control that prevents all SQL injection. And I, I wanted to say, really, that's the only vulnerability you protect against and you believe you're secure? Let's go back to the moron comment. But, uh, um, so we, okay, cool, right? And this is, this is a cooperative pen test. We're, you know, we're working together to help them out. And I'm like, okay, great. So what is this control? He goes, well, let me show you the code. And he pulls up the source code of the, SQL I library, and it is literally one function that searches for single quotes and removes them. <laughs> now, one, that's awesome. <laughs> and you guys know the rule, right? If a pen tester says they like something, get it the hell off your network, <laughs> right? I love silence. <laughs> Just so you guys all know, silence isn't even a, like a hiccup for us as we do pen tests. But I said to the guy, you're removing single quotes. And he goes, yeah. I said, can I see some of the dynamic SQL queries you're doing? Every dynamic SQL query he ran used double quotes to delimit strings. 
So while they were removing a special character, it wasn't even a special character that would cause SQL injection in their app. And I pointed that out to the guy, and he said, but Kevin, SQL injection uses single quotes. Like, it can, <laughs> right? Like, it's, it is possible that SQL injection with a single quote, right? That is the way we teach people. It's the stereotypical string, the payload, whatever, right? But it's not the only. That's like saying, I am completely protected from murder. Nobody can murder me. Really, yes, I'm immune to arsenic. No, that doesn't mean you're, that means somebody can't poison you with arsenic. They can still shoot you in the head. You can get hit with a bazooka. I want to be very clear, using the bazooka as a bat would be hitting you with the bazooka, right? I think that'd kill you. I don't know, I've never hit somebody with a bazooka. I've never even had a bazooka, that would be awesome. <gasps> Told you, tangents. But, we look at what's out there today and it's crazy. We have tons of issues. Every single day we have new vulnerabilities being announced. And as I said last year, and it's still true, we've gotten to a point where we don't worry about critical, high, medium, and low, we worry about whether or not it's got a logo or not. There was a patch just recently released and yet again, because I've told this story a million times because it happens constantly, I have companies say to me, oh, we didn't patch for that because, um, well, we didn't think it was that big a deal. There was no logo. I stole a million dollars from you. Yes, but you didn't use Heartbleed. I hate people. <laughs> On top of that, we have really, really complex systems being deployed, right? More and more business critical systems. We have the cloud. <laughs> I, I don't know who just groaned over here, but I agree, right? You know what the cloud is, right? Somebody else's computer. I always love when people say, I have a private cloud. Really? Does that mean you have a data center? <laughs> Sorry, it's a mainframe. Private cloud. Do you have private rainstorms? And why did we name cloud after something that would ruin computers? Water. By the way, I do know why we named it the cloud. It's the Visio icon for the internet. Right? That's why we're trying to get people to call the databases the cylinder. <laughs> I'm working on it, right? Like, we're going to have cylinder injection, but that sounds inappropriate. But, uh... So then we've got like all of these things, right? Like cloud, IOT. That's my new favorite. Internet of things. Wasn't the internet always of things? I mean, seriously, right? And I know what they're trying to get at, right? Oh, it's embedded. Ooh, it's different. No, it's not. We do the same shit over and over and over again. And we call it new. And we got vendors, and I know I'm a vendor. We have vendors marketing stuff. I still think my favorite t-shirt I ever saw from a vendor, and let's be blunt, I don't even remember which vendor it was. They had a shirt, it's like, we offer negative day protection. <laughs> negative day? Let's walk through this one for a second, right? Zero day as far as I know, is a vulnerability exists and there's no patch for it, right? So does that mean negative day is the vulnerability doesn't exist? Fuck, I'll protect you from that. <laughs> <laughs> it's nuts. It is totally crazy. But they were giving out shirts and people were, oh man, I need a shirt, okay. Go to Amazon, they sell them. You can buy shirts that aren't vendor branded. <laughs> but this has become critical, right? The day my grandfather, you know, he's, he's gone now, but the day my grandfather said, hey, I need a computer, freaked me out. Damn, he's looking at porn. I don't need to know that. <laughs> but computers are part of everything we do. We have smartphones. I have a watch that has more computing power than NASA, right? I don't know if that's really true, but it sounds good. By the way, learn from my example. If you ever get to present at NASA, 
for something, right? Do not start your talk with, hey guys, when we're done, could you show me the fake moon landing site? <laughs> they don't think it's funny. <laughs> I thought it was gonna break the ice or something, right? But we see this constantly and everybody in this room's job is more difficult because of security. It's more difficult because there are people out there to get you, right? Can we all talk about anonymous for a minute? Let me ask, how many people here are a member of Anonymous? Just raise your hand. <laughs> now see, it's funny. Nobody raised their hand. <laughs> Just pointing that out. And everybody laughed like that was hilarious. Yet if you go on Facebook, there are jackasses with their real name next to the Anonymous logo as their profile picture. Do they not know the meaning of that word? <laughs> if I was the FBI, I'd just arrest all those people. And I know, I know, innocent until proven guilty, but they're dumb. We need to get them off the internet. <laughs> Just saying, right? We have to protect ourselves. And this is a big deal. And I talk about this quite often. I talked about it last year. I have two daughters, right? They're beautiful, so they must not be mine. But my oldest just turned 15. My youngest just turned 11. Monday, Sarah turned 11. Scaring the crap out of me. I am responsible for their lives. My job is to make sure that they grow up to be well-rounded, mature, capable citizens of the world. I don't even know that I am. And there, this is a job, like they handed me, Brenna, my oldest, when they handed me Brenna the first time, like here, oh, there was music, lights, everything was crazy, right? And it hit me that this is the only thing in my life that I'm going to do that I won't know I'm successful until way past the point of being able to fix it, right? And I think they're pretty good. I'm biased, right? I will tell you that when they handed me Brenna, I realized that every parent in the world thinks that their child is the most beautiful, smartest, most amazing kid. The second thing I realized is every other parent is wrong. <laughs> but I look at these kids and my job is to protect them. And I'll tell you right now that right now, today, you can Google search Brenna's social security number because she was part of a breach at Wilson's Children's Hospital where her data was stolen. And I talked about this last year. Somebody just mentioned it to me this morning, like, hey, last year you talked about your daughter getting hacked. Yeah, I did. Because our job is to prevent that. Our job is to stop making parents talk to nine-year-old kids about the fact that their identity is now public, which is what I had to do. And this isn't us, think of the kids. But the reality is we have to worry about this. Our businesses have to worry about security. We have to know what to do. And let me ask you a question. Do you? Do you know what's important? And I would argue you probably don't. And I don't mean that meanly, because I would argue that I don't either. And I'll give you a good example of this. PCI, that you must be this tall to ride the internet. How many people here have read the fact that PCI says you can't use SSL version 2, you got to use TLS version 2753 or something, right? Self-signed certs are bad, right? PCI tells us this. Let me ask you a question. In all of your experiences, in all of the stories you've heard, name a breach, name an exploit, that a, 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 a mass attack, even one company that has lost data due to the fact that they were using SSL version 2. You can't, because it hasn't happened. But the reality is right now that if I go into an organization and do a pen test, and I find a server running SSL v2, and it's a PCI-related pen test at all, I have to literally say, oh, shit, dude, that's critical. That is a base lack of understanding of real threats. The fact that web applications can have cross-site scripting in the authentication system and pass, but heaven help us if they're running a self-signed cert. That's fucked up. And that's a lack of understanding what real risk is. What is really the threats you have to protect against yourself? What are you supposed to be testing for? 
What are you supposed to look for? And don't get me wrong, I understand that compliance is a requirement. And we're not going to get rid of compliance anytime soon, especially now that the federal government has decided they should get into that game. Because that's brilliant. They've done so well, OPM. How many people here were affected by the OPM breach? Right? Jackasses. Not you. <laughs> I realized I just called the audience jackasses. It's not what I meant. These are the things we're fighting with. We have to fix this. And as we move forward with development and purchasing, and I threw purchasing in there because I always love companies that say to me, we're not worried about web application security. Why not? We don't build any apps. Do you use any apps? Oh, yeah. So you're worried about web application, right? Like, it, this is one of my favorite things is, right? Like, we build apps. Really, do you, do you, what do you do for security? We have SSL. Okay, I asked what you do for security, <laughs> right? We have a firewall. 80 and 443 open? Well, 80 is, <laughs> right? This is ridiculous. We're running down this path. How many people here work for an organization that doesn't have any web applications? Yeah, I thought so, right? Nobody raised their hand. That's like asking if there's anybody in the audience that doesn't like bacon, <laughs> right? <laughs> Bacon and web apps, it's what runs the world. I know, I know, vegans hate bacon. And your life sucks, but <laughs> vegan bacon. Somebody tried to trick me once and let me eat vegan bacon. I punched them, but <laughs> we've got more and more business critical functionality running in apps. And don't get me wrong, the more apps we build, the worse our user awareness is. It is, because we literally send people links for them to click on to go for training to not click links. <laughs> like to me, that should just be a web page that says, you shouldn't have done that, <laughs> and done. There's your user awareness training. It's kind of like all the advanced persistent threats, which is Bob in accounting, clicking on shit. <laughs> He's persistent because you didn't fire him. <laughs> I don't like companies. It was an advanced attack. What happened? Well, somebody got an email. <laughs> I don't know about you, but email's not that advanced, right? We need to test this stuff. We need to understand what's going on, right? Purchasing, let's be blunt. Your business, your organization, the people buying stuff should enforce security controls on their vendors. We just fired a vendor. I mean, I won't name them because I don't want to embarrass SharpSpring. <laughs> They're a marketing system in CRM. And we went to them and we said, hey, we would like to use your services because, you know, like we're greedy capitalists. My goal as a business is to be protested by the Occupy movement. That's how you know you've made it as a capitalist, right? Pup tents in your cul-de-sac. <laughs> it's worth a shot. Right? So we said to them, hey, have you, did you have a pen test? Can you give us an attestation letter of your pen test? And they said, yes, we did. So can you send us the attestation letter? Yeah, we'll get it for you. So we went back and forth, went back and forth, went back and forth. We signed up for the system. We started using the system. Let's not talk about using the system. So we wrote to them and said, hey, we never got that attestation letter from you. Right? And their answer was, oh, we're not sure where you got the impression we had had a pen test. We're going to have a pen test. Well, that's very different. So last night, we closed our account. And that's the way it should be, right? Hold your vendors. And by the way, I emailed the CEO to let him know that the reason we were canceling our account, not that our account is that big a deal to them, right? 600 bucks a month. No big deal. But I wanted to make sure that they knew that the reason we were canceling our account was because of the lack of security on their end. Because until we get businesses and developers and our own organizations to understand that not being secure has an impact on the bottom line, not just reputation, right? Because that's a big one. We as security people, and I'm assuming most of the people in the audience are security people in some case, some way, we have long talked about, oh, 
You don't want to get hacked because the reputational harm is really, really bad. Really? Target go out of business? Goodwill go out of business? Visa go out of business? Experian go out of business? Hell, TJ Maxx's stocks went up 18% after their breach was announced. Reputation isn't the problem. We talk to people all the time. They interviewed people at TJ Maxx, and I know that's an old hack. Many of you aren't old enough to remember that hack. Back in my day, we walked uphill both ways in the snow to get our packets delivered. <laughs> but they interviewed people at TJ Maxx. Did you know about the breach? Yes. You just paid with a credit card? Yes. Why? They must be secure now. Because that's how it works. <coughs> you get hacked and magically security fairies come by and fix everything. Poof. <coughs> and then we have agile development. <sighs> I don't mean to be rude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's always the way to get started with being rude. It's like, I'm not a racist, but... <laughs> By the way, I am, I am a racist. I hate marathons. <coughs> so it's a race for the people who don't know. <laughs> but agile development. Now, I don't, I don't want to assume, but isn't this stereotype for developer, fat neckbeard? Agile is the last word I would think of. For develop and look, I'm talking about me here, right? I am not agile. I'm barely standing up. But I get a kick out of agile development, right? You actually see companies who advertise, we are agile. Really, what does that mean? We deploy 27 times a day. Like, that's a proud thing. What I hear when they say that is, our code sucks so bad, we have to deploy 27 times a day. I know it's not what they mean, but when we look at systems like that, right? Hey, how often do you deploy? We deploy every week, every day, every hour, every minute. How do you do security testing on that? Because I don't know about you, but I don't have enough people. Right? And don't get me wrong. If you want to test your hourly deployment with a full pen test, I'll do it. I'll sign that SOW. It's going to be expensive. <laughs> and we're cheap. <laughs> but you can't. There's no way that you're testing as often as you should be. Right? There's no way that you are really getting out there and assessing things and doing a good comprehensive job of making sure you're secure. And you have to be. Because the developers, look, we can pick on developers if we want. Right? The vast majority of problems on applications are caused by developers. Of course, that's like saying the vast majority of problems in the building of houses is caused by construction workers. It's the way it works. It's not they're stupid. Look, I was a developer. And I remember it, right? I just got the job, you know, ooh, I'm all, it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna build apps. And the manager comes to me and says, hey, Kevin, we have a project. How long would it take you to build this? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, man, that's about six months. You have two weeks, we've already sold it. <laughs> right? Why did you even ask? What was the purpose? You made me feel like I was part of the process? It failed. Fast, <laughs> good, <laughs> secure. We always used to say pick two of the three, and reality is pick one of the three. <laughs> right? You can have a secure app, but you're not going to build it fast, and users are going to hate it. <laughs> right? I, I love when people complain. You have to protect my data, but don't make me enter two-factor authentication. It's confusing. My password can't have spaces. I don't know how to type the biggest button on the keyboard. <laughs> I. <laughs> I laugh every single time I log into my Amex account. Because you can't put spaces in your password. Because spaces are evil, I guess. And it's like, really? That is literally the biggest key on the keyboard. I should be allowed to use lots of spaces. My password, I used to tell people, was seven question marks, followed by the number one. That way, if the attacker used Kane and Abel, they wouldn't know they actually cracked my password. <laughs> 
That's a joke for the old guys, <laughs> right? But we got to test this stuff. And what I find is, as I look at testing, as I do testing, right, we have to stop being attackers. I want to be clear. It's hard for me to say that. And the reason it's hard for me to say that is because I tell everybody in the world that I have the world's best job. I literally get to come into your organization, beat you up, call your baby ugly and tell you you suck, and go home. It's great. I giggle my entire job. <laughs> you did that? What were you smoking? One of my favorites, I was working with a developer, we do a thing called ride-along pen testing. We call it ride-along pen testing because I watched too many episodes of Cops when I was a kid. So we do ride-along pen testing, we come on site, we sit down with your developers, your admins, your security people, and we do our testing. And as we're doing our testing, we're like, hey, that looks sucky. Here's why, here's how we did this. And the idea is that when we leave, you can keep doing what we do. Because the reality is, as I joke around saying we're trying to be a one percenter, right, protest by the Occupy movement, the actual mission statement for Secure Ideas is to go out of business. If we do our job right, you don't need us. If we do our job to the best of our ability, you don't need us. Now, Wells Fargo, the people who hold my mortgage, are happy to know that that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. God, I hope. <clears throat> I have salaries to pay. <laughs> but our job is to educate. So we go and do these ride-along pen tests, and we teach people, like, hey, this is how you do the testing we do, so that when we leave, you can keep doing it, right? And I go on site to this one job, and I'm, I'm doing the testing, and I've got burp up, and I oh, browse to the website. It's an Internet Explorer, because it's using a lot of client-side VB script. It's an old app. And in the client-side VB script, I see a database connection from the client side to the backend database using the SA account. I giggled a little. <laughs> and then I said to the developer, that's bad. Look at that. And the developer looked at it. And I swear to you, the guy looked at me and said, but look how strong that password is. The really bad part is, he was right. It was a really strong password. I know, because I could see it. <laughs> and it's like, that's broken. And the developer, who is a smart guy, he really was. He's like, I don't understand why that's a problem. Well, uh, go away. <laughs> we see this all the time. And we do this bad thing as pen testers. Right? How many people here have sat in a talk like this from a penetration tester and listened to them talk about the cool exploits they do? And I'll tell you, all of you did, because I've talked about some today. <laughs> we stand up and we idolize the ideas of attacks. We stand up and we say, man, I had this app, and I stole 4 million credit card numbers and 100,000 social security numbers, and I had access to every single server. At Secure Ideas, we have a job. If you get domain admin rights or root access to a majority of the network, you get a steak dinner that we pay for. And we don't even expense the customer for it. Nice of us. <laughs> so you can actually follow my consultants on Twitter, and every once in a while you'll see, steak dinner tonight. <laughs> That's a customer who's upset. <laughs> we talk about this all the time. And we've gotten to a point in this field where it's a contest. I've literally had people say to me, how many of your pen tests do you win? And I said, all of them. And the reason I said all of them is because to me, winning meant they signed a contract. I won the work. And if I'm doing the pen test, they signed a contract because I'm not evil. And I realized what they meant was, how many of them do I win by finding vulnerabilities? And I'm trying to explain to this person, that's not a win. That's a loss. Yeah, I got in. Yeah, I stole data. But I lost. Because that's yet another vulnerability that somebody has exposed to the internet causing harm. 
And I've talked to clients after we're done with a pen test. And let's be clear, we have beat the hell out of some clients, right? We go in and do a pen test like, oh, you're running Windows Vista. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty secure because most of the hackers nowadays don't remember how to attack it. <laughs> you laugh, but I'm serious. <laughs> I was doing a pen test when I was at InGuardians, and I found an IIS3 box. And I'm like, yes! And then I realized I didn't remember how to exploit an IIS3 box. <laughs> So I called Jay Beal, who was my boss, right? One of the guys who owns in Guardians. And I'm like, Jay, I got a problem. He's like, what? I said, I found IIS3. He's like, is the problem you can't figure out how far to go? I'm like, no, the problem is I can't remember how to exploit it. And Jay's like, Kevin, it's easy. All you have to do is um, shit. <laughs> so we had to look it up. But Google! We do pen tests. We have customers say to us, oh, man, we lost. You hacked us. It's like you realize that I got in. I got domain admin rights. I stole a million credit card numbers. I stole money. I did this. I put funny pictures as your wallpaper. Whatever. Right? Still mad at that one airport where I had control of the train and they wouldn't let me drive it. <laughs> That's just mean, right? Like, I really, I own the system. I should be allowed to drive the train. <sighs> People may die or something. <gasps> I offered to come in at like 3 a.m. when nobody was on the train so I could drive the train. They wouldn't let me. I was like, come on. I shouldn't have asked. But <laughs> certain things you just have to do, right? But we talk to these people and they're like, we lost. And it's like, do you understand that while I stole that data, while I got with permission, while I compromised that system, 90% of what I tried failed? Thousands of attacks failed. You blocked millions of attempts to compromise you. You won. And not only did you win that, but by me finding these other vulnerabilities, you're able to fix them. This is good. We need to start looking at understanding both sides of this equation, right? We have to start thinking about, here's the attack, but here's the defense. We need to honestly look at how well did you detect me? How well did you respond? Because it's not enough just to say, wow, you suck. We have to truly understand how well we're defending. Because the reality is you're under attack. I don't care who you are. I always giggle a little bit when you talk to a company and they're like, hey, you know, you, cool logo, love your stuff, man, but we don't need your services because nobody's attacking us. Really? Yeah, we got nothing sensitive. Really? Then why are you in business? <laughs> like, what do you do for a living? Right? I had a police uh, a company that was, they were the support system for a police station, their IT support. And their answer was, nobody attacks us through the network. Nobody's doing cyber attacks against our police station. And I'm like, why not? And they're like, because we have guns. <laughs> that was their answer. We have guns. Now, I want to be very clear. It was not the police officers making that comment. It was the morons who ran their IT. And I will say morons at that point, because if you honestly believe that people on the internet aren't attacking you because you have guns, I have a bridge to sell you. You're under attack. And if you're not looking at your defenses, let me ask you a question. How many people here have had a pen test done? How many people here do vulnerability scanning of their network? How many people here are testing the security of their systems? Yeah, almost all of you, if not all of you. How many of you, while you're doing that pen test, when you find that vulnerability, then go back and say to your IT people, say to your incident response people, say to the people who are responsible for figuring out what the hell happened, hey, track that back. How many of you are actually looking at, do you have the logs to do a response based on that pen test? And I, have, I say this to people all the time, and people are like, well, yeah, but Kevin, you're the pen tester. We know what you did. You'll get us a report. And it's like, no, that's not my point. My point is, this is the perfect time to test how well you respond. 
It's the perfect time to test how well you can detect an attack and figure out what happened because you can ask the hacker. You can literally look at me and say, dude, this is weird. What did you do there? And more than likely, I can tell you. I say more than likely because a lot of times when I do get asked, it wasn't me doing that attack. Because unlike popular belief, the hackers don't leave you alone during a pen test. I always love what people say to me, right? Like, I, I got a call once. I'm doing an external pen test. So I'm on the external network. We start it. About an hour after we started, I got a phone call. Kevin, why are you messing with the CEO's laptop? What do you mean? Well, the CEO has a whole bunch of pop-ups and problems on their laptop, and uh, you guys obviously have compromised it. I said, well, first, we haven't. Like, we're still in reconnaissance. We're still doing Google searches about your company. Right? We haven't started attacking anything. Second, why are you so positive that within an hour of starting, I got all the way into your network, found the CEO's laptop, and fucked it up? <laughs> like, you're that confident? How about I just send you a report? I'll just pick a random report, because it'll probably fit. And they're like, well, but Kevin, you're doing a pen test. The hackers shouldn't be coming after us now. Let's be clear. If you believe that hackers will stop hacking you because you're having a pen test, pay for a pen test that happens all the time. Right? It's only logical. If the hackers are going to leave you alone, I'll start the pen test January 1st, and I'll go through December 31st. I'll even cut you a deal. Because <laughs> it's just a contract. We don't actually have to test you at that point because the pen test is protecting you. We'll add that to our negative day protection. But, <laughs> right, you have to combine both sides. Because the other side is just as true. As a pen tester, I don't know what your worries are. I look at your organization, I think I know. But I'm not sure. What keeps you up at night? What is the thing that worries you that if this happens, you're out of business? And the example I always give is Coca-Cola. Coke's cool, right? How many people here believe that the recipe is Coke's biggest worry? Right? They have a vault. Nobody can steal the recipe. Be bad. Do you know why Coke isn't worried about the recipe? Science. You can reverse engineer what makes Coke. On the flip side of that, Pepsi, their biggest competitor, I assume, is not going to come out one day and say, hey, for the last 150 years, we've been doing taste tests, we've been lying to you and telling you people like Pepsi better. We're here to admit that Coke is better than Pepsi. But don't worry, we stole the recipe and we're now selling Pepsi Coke. <laughs> That's not going to happen. As a matter of fact, the people who have stolen the recipe and call Pepsi, because it happens, right? They call them, hey, I got the Coke recipe, you want it? Do you know what Pepsi does? They call Coke. Susan just called us about your recipe. Do you want to handle it or do you want us to handle it? Right? That's how that works. They're not worried about that. So as a pen tester, if you're going to pen test Coke, which by the way, I want to be very clear, I'm, they're not a client of mine. If my goal is to get their recipe, they don't care. I haven't truly tested them to assess their risks. I haven't really evaluated what the worry is. So we have to figure out, what do we look for? Well, from the red team side, we should be looking for flaws. Duh. But we need to be looking at flaws that really impact people. We need to be looking for things that actually impact the organization. Don't get me wrong. I'm still going to report SSL. I have to, right? Because if I don't tell you about the SSL and you fail compliance because of it, that's a problem. But I'm going to be irritated every time I write up the finding. But instead, how about I look for what's really worrisome? Hey, you know what? You have really good cross-site request forgery controls, except on this one page. And this one page is a very serious transaction and is missing the check. 
because I took enough time and I talked to you enough to understand what that transaction did and why it impacted your business. I didn't just say, oh, cross-site scripting, SSL, SQL injection. I thought about it. I talked to you. I met with you, right? Look at logic and process attacks. Those are a big one, right? A lot of people miss them. If I can twist the logic around, can I get it to do this? If I can step into the middle of a process, right? We just saw a really good blog post, and I apologize. I don't remember the gentleman's name who wrote it. Uh, so I'm not trying to take credit, but I don't remember the person's name. So I'm gonna, I probably shouldn't mention it at all. But they actually showed this really cool thing with uh, Java Web Tokens, where Java Web Tokens have a none alg algorithm. And because it's client side, right, you can bypass the validation of the token and bypass authorization because of the none algorithm, right? It, it's awesome. And I hate the fact that I don't have a URL or a name to give you, but if you email me, I'll look it up and send it to you, right? But that's the type of attack we want to look for. That's the type of things we want to say, hey, that is a huge impact because it breaks authorization. And it breaks authorization in such a way that you're not going to log an actual break. It's not something a piece of software like Checkmarks is going to find. And I don't want to make fun of check marks because there's lots to make fun of there. But um, we, <coughs> we, uh, those are the types of things you want to look for. Those are the types of things you want to say, hey, what is this impact? Right? And we want to look at that. And to do that, we have to understand attacks. That's the very first thing. If you don't understand what the attacks are, you can't find the vulnerabilities. I have people say to me, wait, are you teaching my developers to hack? Yes! Ooh. If you teach my developers how to hack, they may hack people. You're right. And if I teach people to breathe, they may say stupid shit like that. <laughs> it's like that old saying, right? If we train our people, they may leave. The response is always, if we don't train them, they may stay. <sighs> and then they become governor, or president, or senator, or whatever. Politicians. I don't care your. I want to be very clear. I'm not doing a political joke there. I don't do political jokes. I don't care your politics. I know mine. The only political religious war I will ever get into is VI versus Emacs, and that's because we know VI wins. <laughs> now, I said that once in class, and this guy in the back of the room's like, "Rock my!" He slammed his fist in the desk. He stood up and he stormed out. I'm like shit. <laughs> that was a joke. I mean, VI is better, but. A little bit later, the guy came back. He was calmed down a little bit, sweating and everything. I'm like, dude, you okay? And he's like, yeah, man, I, that, that was mean. I'm like, what? Why, why do you care? He's like, well, it turned out he was one of the v Emacs' developers. <laughs> so I didn't know what to say. So all I could say was, dude, Emacs is an awesome operating system. But you have to understand the attacks, right? You have to understand what SQL injection is. You have to understand what cross-site request forgery is. You have to understand what a buffer overflow is. Because if you don't understand it, you can't detect it. But you also need to have context. You have to know how that attack fits. You have to know where it runs. You have to know what the application does. Because just knowing you have a vulnerability is not enough. And I'll give you an example. Who thinks, which of these two things do you think is worse? Is it worse to have a SQL injection flaw in a calendar app compared to having a SQL injection flaw in a calendar app, which gets you access to the backend database, which also stores all of the HR data for the organization, and the calendar app ID has the same access. Which is worse? The second one, right? And we know the second one because we understand the context of where the payload runs. We understand what the application is doing. We understand what it's doing on the server. We understand what it's talking to. That's context. If we don't have that context, all we are is Nessus. And nothing against Nessus, don't get me wrong, right? But Nessus is just a report that says, ah, shit's broke! And you paid $2,500 a year for that report. It's awesome. <laughs> we need context. And then flipping to the other side, right? Blue. I think we call it blue because they're depressed. I, it's only thing that makes sense to me. Defense sucks. 
It is the only job I know of that you are guaranteed to fail. Period. So I always laugh when people say, oh man, if we get hacked, that's an RGE. For people who don't know what RGE is, that's resume generating event. <laughs> Those are the real bad incidents. <laughs> well, I planned out a budget, but it's for the next CISO because I'm out of here. <laughs> We have to pay attention to the blue side. We have to pay attention to defenses, right? We have to think about what are, what are the controls we have? And do the controls actually work? Stepping around the marketing. I always love it, like people say to me, hey, what's the best endpoint protection software out there? And my answer is the power button. If you turn it off, your endpoint is protected. It's useless, but it's protected. The real answer for the people who want to know is BDS, binary defense systems, is software. It's awesome. And I will admit my bias. I think Dave Kennedy and his team are amazing, right? But they also built one of the best systems out there, okay? And I'm not shilling for them. They're that fucking good, right? But you gotta think about what your defenses are. Are we monitoring? Are we looking at logs? Do we know what's happening, right? Which brings up logging in general. Let me ask, how many people here are developers? Okay, how many developers have actually built an application for an enterprise? Okay, let me ask you a question. I'm gonna pick on you, sir, because you're close enough that I can actually point at you. Sorry, you sat too far back. But, so, you built an application for an enterprise that's been in production, right? Did you build any type of logging system into that app? Okay, good. When you deployed to production, who did you tell about those logs? You told them? Did you explain to them what they meant? Ah, so they were useless. <laughs> I was a Webster admin, and we had an app that broke. And at 2 o'clock in the morning, bring me, bring me, ah, it's broke. I log in, I can't figure out how to fix it. So I called the on-call developer. I said, look, I got this log here. It says error code 42. I'm not making it up. It really was 42. So it was like the answer of everything. But um, I said, okay, what do I do? And he goes, do this, 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 and it'll fix the problem. I know what that is. I'm like, oh, I did this, it fixed the problem. That's awesome. Two days later, app dies. I get woken up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I look at the logs. There's error code 42. So I don't have to call the guy. I do this, 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 and it, fix it didn't fix the problem. Shit. So I call the developer. I say to the developer, hey, I got error code 42 again, and, uh, but th I did the things you told me two nights ago. It's not fixing the problem. And the guy says to me, and I quote, is the E that starts error capital or not? It's a lowercase 42, does that matter? <laughs> so I said, it's capital. He's like, oh, two nights ago it was lowercase, wasn't it? I'm like, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Turns out that error code 42 was a completely different thing than error code 42. If he capitalized the E, I had to do something else to fix it. What the hell are you smoking? This is what we got to fix. That logging needs to be explained this. I'm glad you did it, right? But you look at things, hey, did you log failed authentication attempts? Yes. Did you log successful authentication attempts? No, that'd be too many logs. So I can tell you that people failed a million times, but I can't tell you they succeeded once. That's a problem. And that's why all of these jokes, all of these stories, one second. I'm almost done, I'm sorry, guys is to focus on both sides. Dave Kennedy came up with purple team testing. We've talked about this for years, right? Royal, just so you guys know, purple is the royal color is where that came from. Dumb joke, but I liked it. We have to think about everything. We have to stop siloizing. I don't know if that's a real word, but it's kind of like gruntled. All of our employees are gruntled until they become disgruntled. We have to stop separating security into red and blue. We have to stop separating security from business. We gotta focus on this. We need to look at this. We need to think about it as we're testing. We have to think about it as we're building the controls. We have to think about it as we're evaluating what we do to move forward. So I'm gonna end here. I'm gonna say thank you very much. I hope you guys took something from this. I hope you think a little bit more about both sides of this. 
And I will say, if there's any questions or comments, I don't want to take any more time. Uh, we, I'll be at the booth for the rest of the day, except for a time when I have a phone call. Uh, we'll be around. Uh, I really do want to fix this problem. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, things to throw, swing by, call me, email me, or whatever, and we will talk. Okay? Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy. <laughs>